Because it was a big one, and it was one that made the news more than once. And again, it was the sum of all fears about DDoS attacks against DNS. That's about the domain hosting company called Point DNS. It was attacked by a massive non-NTP amplification attack. And, uh, well, they, the registrar for 220,000 domains, so those 220,000 domains and most of their services experienced intermittent connectivity problems. Now, they were offline for hours. No email, no DNS updates. The attack was coming from non-spoofed, non-NTP sources, which was even more troubling because this wasn't an NTP amplification attack. This was someone actually turning a real botnet against DNS. DNS. Uh, this this is an old-fashioned botnet attack now going after DNS. And, well, I, I think this the scary part, 20 gigabits has become the new norm with 400 gigabits per second becoming the burst traffic that we expect from one of these big attacks. The DNS just wasn't wasn't designed to handle that, right? I mean, what's what's one of the fatal flaws about DNS that makes it so susceptible, susceptible to DDoS attacks? Well, um... I say, first of all, that most people don't have that kind of bandwidth to the Internet in aggregate. So that would saturate your pipes before uh, you even got the traffic all the way to the authoritative name servers. Um, you know, I think that part of the problem is that authoritative name servers are public resources. And so you can't really filter out uh, traffic that, that is coming into those external authoritative name servers unless you know that uh, an attack is, is actually underway. You can drop some obvious traffic, uh, stuff from Bogon networks, um, you know, stuff from your own address base, uh, stuff like that. But, but generally speaking, you can't just say, hey, look, I'm, I'm only going to allow a few, um, you know, authorized queriers. You have to allow everybody to send you queries, and that means that, you know, you're allowing potentially a whole lot of traffic to reach those, uh, those name servers. Now, we've got Sinak in the chat room who is, uh, he's chanting something that I see a lot from folks who deal with ENS, which is UDP, UDP, UDP. Mm -hmm. But that's not immune, right? I mean, because traffic floods, you, you'll see it on TCP, you'll see it on UDP, you'll see it on ICMP. These floods, they, they don't know a boundary. They don't know a protocol. Right. I mean, I think that, that maybe his point is that uh, you can hurl a whole lot of UDP at someone you don't have to worry about uh, TCP connection setup. You don't have to worry about spoofing the three-way handshake. You just throw a lot of UDP datagrams at someone. And in aggregate, that can amount to a whole lot of traffic. Um, so he's right in pointing out that UDP is, is different from TCP in that way. But, you know, you can also exhaust other resources. Right. You can exhaust TCP-based uh, query slots in uh, a name server. You can, you know, exhaust uh, SIN slots uh, on a, a firewall, border router, whatever.